Michael, the one thing that really fascinates me about the study of consciousness is the diversity of the theories that are used to explain it. From eliminating consciousness as something that doesn't even exist, to saying conscious is the only thing that exists and everything in between. You have created a very interesting neurophysiological theory of consciousness. I'd like you to explain it to me briefly and try to see how it articulates with some of these other theories out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll tell you a very brief story. When I first started writing about this topic, uh, I write, wrote, wrote a little book for the general public. I had no idea that I was writing about my own theory of consciousness. I thought I was putting together pieces, putting them together in my own way, but pieces that had been emerging from the literature for decades. Uh, and so, you know, I was quite surprised when people started writing to me and saying, uh, wow, this is a new theory. Why don't you publish a paper in an archival journal on it? And I thought, really, I did? The theory of consciousness? So I, I see this theory as, as tied to a lot of the previous theories, as, as in some sense growing out of or, or combining some of the elements from, from previous work. Uh, on the neural so basis of consciousness. So tell, tell me the theory quickly. Yeah. So the theory in, at its heart is, uh, if I can put it in a sentence, that uh, it's a theory of awareness, how we get to be aware of something. So it's that particular component of consciousness. And awareness is the brain's way of describing to itself what it means to focus attention on something. So it's a very simple theory at its heart. So attention is a way of focusing on some signals and processing them deeply. But the brain has to not only do that, but it has to know that it's doing it and has to know what that means to do that and what the consequences are. And so it builds this construct or this model to itself that says attention is like this. And that's the brain's description. Awareness is the brain's description. So that, that, that's kind of the heart of the theory. Where, where does that come from? You know, uh, it, it, it's a convergence of a lot of different ideas. Uh, so one idea which has been in the literature for a very long time is this notion of uh, in integrated information. And, and there's, there's, you know, Tononi is probably the, the current main proponent of that idea. It goes back a very long way in many different forms. Uh, you could say that, um, you know, the old sci-fi trope that if you make the computer complicated enough, it becomes conscious mysteriously. This is uh, uh, basically the same idea. Packing enough information, it becomes, it becomes aware. And, and I, uh, that by itself, I think, is um, not enough. But that is part of this uh, theory of awareness. Uh, because this is fundamentally a theory in which you link different kinds of information together. So for me to be aware of something, for me to be aware of, I don't know, an apple in front of me, I need information about the apple, rich information about the apple. But I also need this rich information about what it means to pay attention to the apple. And I need information on me, who I am, and, and the fact that I'm an, a, a, an entity and an agent. And all of that needs to be balanced together into one large informational chunk. But you do not need anything mysterious about consciousness. No. You don't need to no uh, to uh, um, make a new force in nature or no. something irreducible no. No. in some sense. You don't need uh, any special uh, consciousness uh, 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 particle no. <laughs> or anything no. to do that. You're happy at the neuronal level. Yes. Yes. You don't need to go to quantum physics no. and, and uh, you don't need to go to uh, uh, extra spaces or phases or no. things like that. No, I think all that's quite silly, to be completely honest. Uh, so integrated information yes. is, is really two parts. One is, the, is, the, is how you get in information sufficiently complex and sufficiently integrated, but it also contemplates, in order to do that, you have to develop all these kinds of phase spaces that is a kind of fundamental reality. So it's kind of different. Well, in the context of my theory, I would say specifically the, the, the trick, the, the piece to understand is how uh, information computed in different regions of the brain links up okay. and forms a single entity or a single uh, mm -hmm. accessible mm -hmm. chunk of information, a single mm -hmm. model, such that we can look at something and say, you know, that's an apple, it's green, it's round, and I have an awareness right, right, of it. Right, right. 
and there's an eye that has the awareness. Right. Uh, and all of that needs to be pulled together into one that's, accessible that, unit. And that's the so-called binding problem? That's that's the good old binding problem. And then how do all these different afferent information tell me how it, how it sounds, how it looks, how it yes. feels? It yes. looks like just one thing. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. But what, what I would say is the binding problem by itself or that integrated information problem is not sufficient to explain awareness. There's yeah. another part to it uh, because to be aware of the apple means it requires also not only building a model representation of the apple, but building a model or representation of myself and the special relationship between me and the apple, the fact that I'm attending to it. So, And attending then is the key. Attending is the key. That awareness is the brain's way of describing what attention is and uh, that pulls it all together so I you know I see these uh, inf integrated information models as, as really fundamental building blocks that go into this this theory.